Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday, June 10th, 2016, and this is The Daily Code, episode 39! When will the IoT Minecraft PHP end? Uh, so, the last time we spoke, I was doing some IoT stuff, and it was a lot of fun, but um, I got the Minecraft side of it done really well, and then the Arduino side completely stumped me, and I have no idea why. Because I present to you the finished thing. Uh, it's over there. <laughs> you can't even see my mouse cursor. Uh, layers, man, layers. So, welcome back. This is going to be a slightly shorter, slightly less formal uh, daily, where I show you what I've done and talk about, uh, talk, talk you through the process, because if you haven't been here for both the other shows, then you may not know exactly what's going on. So, uh, let me demo that quickly. While I'm starting up Minecraft, I will talk a little bit about why. Mm, launcher. This is also the part of the show where things get really slow because um, because Minecraft and memory and transcoding and uh, all the things. But um, I started doing this project or wanting to write for SitePoint about uh, IoT because next month is IoT month and everyone's getting really excited about it and working on projects for it for SitePoint. And I wanted to do this thing where, like I've done in the past, quite a while ago though, about connecting Minecraft to an Arduino and doing fun stuff with it. Because I'm really a fan of Minecraft programming in general. Uh, I've spoken about it at a few places and written a little bit about it and it's really exciting. So, the um, while Minecraft boots up, um, the idea that I got was to make a house in Minecraft, or at least simulate the front door of a house in Minecraft, and then um, have some kind of door alarm system for it, and when the door opens, have it communicate with an Arduino and set off an, a real-world alarm, as a kind of way of, I don't know, setting up an alarm and then being, you know, reading a book or something and hearing when someone is trying to get into your house. Uh, okay, so not not too laggy. I actually reduced the frames of Minecraft to 30 max because that's what I stream at, so there's no point going 60 frames in Minecraft and only 30 in the stream. But um, yeah, this is, this is the uh, basic circuitry that we came up with. There are a few interesting concepts here, and though it's difficult to see anything happen in the circuit here, just listen out what happens when I open the door. Try that again. So, there are a lot of moving parts to this whole thing. By the way, uh, have I told you lately that uh, you're lovely? Um, there are a whole lot of moving parts to this thing. The first is that there is a tester to see when this door opens. Because it... Uh, the, the, I'll show you the command. Test for block at a certain point in the map, and you're checking for wooden door of configuration three. Now three is a bit of a magic number, but the coordinates are not a magic number. They match up to what you see if you open the dev console uh, on Mac, it's function alt F3. And the numbers that you're looking for are these over here. You'll notice they match very closely to what's in here. So 91, 67, minus 194, that matches up. Three is a bit of a magic number because it differs depending on where you're standing when you place the door. Thank you very much for the congratulations. Um, three is the number of of basically how you place the door down. So if you're standing at a different place or your mansion's facing a different direction, you've got to place the door in a certain way, and so you may need to adjust this three. But there are only four possible values, zero, one, two, and three. So just scroll through them. You know the coordinates. You know the kind of block you're looking for, which is wooden underscore door. Just try different numbers of it. Okay, so this test, when we push the button, the test happens. There's a very interesting thing, reason why the door opened, but I don't want to go into it. This test happens whenever this block gets some charge. So the button gives it a charge and 
There we go, the test happens. This funny looking block over here is a comparator. It sees a truthy value in here, and then it pushes a signal using the signal amplifier to the rest of the circuit. Now, this block here whispers back to me, open. That is because when this test works and the door is open, it gets a signal and whispers open. Did you ever work out how to detect the actual open status of the door, not just its edge location? Um, I have done it before, but I can't remember how, and I got frustrated and I actually haven't tried again. But now that everything else is working, maybe I'll try again. Uh, you never know. Um, that is detecting the the open status of the door, not the edge location, as someone in chat has asked. Uh, it's a good question. I just need to go back and try it again. Uh, try work it out with all the other frustrating things out the way. Okay, so test for the open door. If it's open, give a signal here to whisper open. If it gives a signal here, that is to say if the door is open, a signal will come through this redstone here, turn this torch off, and so this will not say closed to me. However, look what happens. Okay, I open the door, a signal comes through, and this whispers open. This is turned off because there's a signal coming through there because the door's open. When I close this, the signal stops here, the redstone torch turns on, and this command block gets a signal and it says closed. So this is an, a, a very, very rudimentary or logic gate because both of these get a charge. Um, and this is a very rudimentary inversion, signal inversion. It's like exclamation point in programming. Uh, it converts a truly value to a falsy value. So that's great. Okay, so how do we get this test to happen? We need to push this button a lot of the time and just stand here and wait for it. Or we can create an infinite loop of redstone blocks that give this block a charge. And that happens because we summon a redstone block directly underneath this. By the way, I didn't tell you about this, but look here. Minecraft has a uh, relative coordinate system. You can substitute these values for x, y, and z. And if you want something below the relative value, you just say that minus 1. There we go. Okay. In order to make this a loop, the bottom block removes the redstone block and adds a block of air. So we'll use the relative coordinates here, plus one, again. And there we go. Let's stop the loop quickly. There we go. Okay. So when we start the loop, it doesn't actually work. We need to place a redstone block in there. Uh, I just remembered that. <laughs> we place a redstone block in there. And that starts the loop off. There we go. Yay! Because this top one's creating redstone blocks and the bottom one is removing them. Makes a loop. Which means this command block gets a lot of signals uh, many times a second and does this test many times a second. Which is part of the reason why this feedback is relatively immediate. There is a bit of a delay there and I'll show you why that is. You see, in order to communicate with PHP, you can do a bunch of different things. You can connect to the server from PHP as another client, which is a lot of work. Or you can listen to server logs. And whispering is captured in server logs. So every time I see whisper to you open and whisper to you closed, I can intercept them with PHP and do stuff. So let's look at that code. The first time I made this Minecraft map, uh, what I did was, there we go, there's that one, Atom. What I did was I printed out to the console when the door opened and closed. Which isn't as interesting as interacting directly with an Arduino, because an Arduino lets us do input and output of all sorts of components, including this buzzer. But the code that I had for that was this. Okay. Uh, you can't see it because the circuit's a little bit over it. Um, I should actually, I'll just move that underneath for now because it's not as interesting. Okay, so the code is, there is this library called Resource Watcher. It takes a Symfony Finder instance, which I'm directing here to the log folder for Minecraft. Get all files with the name star.log in the same depth directory as this path. So go into logs, fetch all the star.log files. Okay, that's what you want to target. Those are the files you want to target. Then create a cache file 
uh, or cache, depending on where you're from. Kiwis like to call it cache. Anyway, it's going to look something like this, which is the path to all the files it's watching and the timestamp, the M time of it, modified time. So you create that file, you give an instance of the cache to the resource watcher, and obviously you set the finder, well not obviously, but in this case, you set the symphony finder instance. Then you can come to later in the code and say, watcher find changes, presumably in some kind of loop, and then get the updated resources in an array. Then you can split that file into the number of lines, traverse it from bottom to top, and identify chat strings that say closed or open. Now that's stuff we did in the daily, and so it would, when we opened the door, it would print to console open closed. But then what I added, after much trial and error and kind of a frustrating daily a couple days ago, the ability to open a connection to the Arduino. Long story short, I had two different libraries I was trying to work, and neither of them I could get to work. And I don't know why. I have to say, I think it may be related to the fact that I am running a USB port and a lot of USB devices, a USB hub and a lot of USB devices, and that potentially it was just taking a very long time to find the Arduino. But I can't say for sure. I, I really can't say for sure. When I tried this with everything unplugged, just the laptop and the Arduino, it worked. And perhaps, depending on the order I plug devices in, it will work or it won't work. I don't know. I don't know. But usually you don't have all this tech set up to stream a daily, so it might not be the same problem for you. Anyway, create a, a new instance of a Fermata board. Fermata, just to recap, is the uh, protocol that you can upload to boards like Arduino that create kind of like the REST API equivalent for a hardware board. So you can use a serial connection or a TCP connection, depending on the version of Fermata, and you can communicate with the board and do modify resources on the board without writing C code or C++ code the whole time. Okay, create a new instance of a Fermata board. The type of connection I'm making is a serial connection to this port in dev. When you plug your Fermata, when you plug your Arduino in, you can actually say ls slash dev on Mac or on Linux, and you will see things like this, depending on the devices you have plugged in. Bizarrely, I don't actually have that many things in dev considering the number of devices I have. But you'll see here, cu.usb modem 1421 and tty.usb modem 1421. So try a few of these device names, but it's usually going to look like USB modem with a numeric uh, suffix. Plug that in here. This is just a stock standard value. Um, de again, depending on Fermata, but it's a stock standard value for that. Then this library, which is Carica Fermata, which you can find on GitHub, which is a brilliant library, by the way. This library implements or has a dependency for an event loop system. So you create an instance of the event loop, and then you start doing some promise looking things with it. So activate the board, when you've activated it, do some stuff, and then run the event loop at the end. That's what makes this a long running process. When you run index.php, it's a long running process. This will run until it crashes. And it'll do this because there's an event loop running, which is architected like an infinite loop, but it does meaningful work in iteration cycles. Okay, create the event loop, run the event loop. When the board is activated, set the, oh, get the reference to pin number nine, which uh, if I bring this back up here, pin number nine is over here, what this blue cord is plugged into and this purple cord's plugged into ground. If you look closely at the board on this buzzer, you'll see a very blurry thing. But on the one side it says S and on the other side it says minus. Minus or GND or ground is usually uh, a reference to ground. Uh, fancy that. And if you look on this side of the Arduino, you'll see a couple ports next to each other on the Uno especially called GND. So plug the minus or the GND or the ground into GND on the Arduino and the other one into the port that you want to access in Arduino, which in this case happens to be port nine. Okay. Get the ninth pin, the ninth port, set its mode to PWM. You can also use mode digital or mode, no, sorry, mode PWM or mode output. Both of those say, when I put a signal through here, send it to the device. 
In this case, give the device power and let it buzz. Then on the loop, set an interval for a thousand, millis a thousand milliseconds. So once a second, this is going to run. Then we do the whole watcher thing, get modified files, uh, updated resources. If there are any, get the first file, split it into lines, walk the lines from bottom to top, do the whole inspection of messages. And hardware cam can go down again. <laughs> do the whole inspection of messages. And if it's closed, set the analog value of this pin to zero or else set the analog value of this pin to one. Now I found with this buzzer, you can actually change the frequency of this. I can say 0 0.5 as in a value this is equivalent to a value of 0 to 255 if you've done Arduino programming before. But it's any gradual range between 0 and 1 at a granularity of 1 255th. <laughs> anyway, you can set that uh, to like half value, run the script again, and this particular buzzer will have a different frequency. Uh, I can't actually do this because I don't have Minecraft booted up anymore. So take my word for it. Anyway. When the door is closed, set the value to zero. When the door is open, set the value to something that will make the buzzer go off and then drop out the loop because I only want to get the last message in the log and do something for that. Okay, and it works. It works. What this essentially does is create some circuitry in Minecraft to detect an open door. Circuitry that will run itself through server restarts and shutdowns because that loop just keeps on going, that redstone air loop just keeps on going. It will detect a change in the blocks at a certain coordinate and it'll write a message to chat. That's one layer of the proverbial application. Then a PHP script with a particular watcher mechanism will watch the log for chat messages. So the API that the Minecraft map has here is chat message API. That's how it communicates with the outside world. It's like if you were making an API, you'd probably use something resty or JSONy or something. This API for the Minecraft map is chat messages. The other microservice application, this PHP script, watches for those chat messages. There's a little bit of implementation detail there. It has to go to a folder. It has to find a certain kind of file. It has to have a cache file. But essentially, it's watching for output from the Minecraft map microservice. It's also connecting to another resource, which is the Arduino board. And the architecture it's using for that is event-based programming, reactive programming. When it's connected to the board, it starts to say, OK, there's a specific thing that I want to do with this board and set up some recurring check that I can run for checking the state of the board or the state of this other microservice, the Minecraft map. When it sees a change in the form of a log message, do something to the Arduino board. Now, you don't have to use an Arduino for this. You can use anything that resembles an Arduino, preferably something that supports the Fermata protocol so that all of this code can stay exactly the same, except presumably the device name. If it's not Fermata compatible, you're going to have to find some PHP library that can speak to it. If it's serial, perhaps you can use concepts similar to this. But go with an Arduino because you can get one for $20 and you can get a buzzer like this or an LED if you don't want to do a buzzer, if you just want to have like flashing red lights, you can do one of those for two to five dollars. So for $25, you can start off your hobbyist electronics obsession. Um, and if you go with an Arduino, you get the free IDE, you get standard formata, you can upload it all and you don't have to learn any C, any C++. So maybe that's a good thing for you and you don't want to have to learn the extra language while you're learning electronics. Maybe you want to learn C and C++, in which case do that, but you don't have to. If it's an Arduino, you can use the same concepts that I've done here to connect to this thing. Then think about this in terms of all sorts of games. This isn't just a Minecraft thing. I like Minecraft and I like the circuitry in it, but you don't have to limit it to that. You could, for instance, see if games like Factorio have some kind of external API or log file in doing exactly the same thing. 
And in games like Factoria, you have access to logic gates as well. It's actually more structured in Factoria than it is in Minecraft. In Minecraft, it's an odd side effect, but in Factorio, it's part of the game. So you can do a whole lot of logic circuits in the game. You can do something creative like watch a log file to see when a rocket has been launched. And if a rocket has been launched, play an MP3 player expansion board sound of a rocket launching. That's a cool idea. You can use this concept portably across all different kinds of games. Minecraft is a personal favorite of mine, but it's not the only thing. You can connect this to Fallout, which again has logic circuits and interactivity in the world. And, and it, it's another first person game. So, I mean, that's cool as well. Then, when you get bored of all these cool ideas, not that I imagine you will, PHP Minecraft server. There has been some work done to communicate with Minecraft servers through PHP code. Two libraries specifically. This one that I'm showing you, but this one is sp this one is more suited towards getting server information and player information. It's not so much about interacting with the uh, the players or the server itself and placing blocks and that kind of thing. It's more suited towards like a dashboard, I guess, is what you'd use this for. But look at the code. I mean, it's it looks pretty cool. You don't have to do any authentication or anything. It just works really well. Okay, but there's another library that you can use, made by the same people. It's just a slightly different library. And it is source query. So Minecraft, apparently, and I, this is, I haven't verified this at all. I just did some research into what libraries you could use. But apparently Minecraft implements source archon protocol, which is just a fancy way of saying this library will speak to it. Okay. So you need some requirements like the GMP module. Um, but look at all these games it speaks to. Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, Gary's Mod, Rust, Minecraft, all of these things it can communicate with. This library can't do query, but the library I just showed you can, which is to say, get the metadata from the server and player information. But this library can do Archon for everything but Armor 3, Space Engineers, and Quake Live. Which means, if you go to the examples here, can go free, how less N, L, cool, O. No idea what that means, Jonathan Gamer Plus. Uh, if you head into this Archon example PHP file, this is an example of how to run a server command on a Minecraft server. You have some details here. These two I don't think change. You'll just use the default Minecraft port and you'll connect to the server address for your Minecraft server. In other words, you'll have to spawn your server in multiplayer, which is fine. You can do that on your local system. But once you do and you connect to this, you should, in theory, be able to execute server commands, which means you can do the same thing that those command blocks are doing. Test for block, set block. You can... Um, I mean, that's enough, basically. That's enough to have full communication through the map and to the computer. I'm not sure what the return value of this is, but set block and test for block are good enough, I think. They're good enough, I think. To design a protocol, I think they're good enough. So this is interesting. If you get bored of connecting to just doing passive connections, from your game to Arduino to real life circuitry. Try investigating something like this. It's compatible with a lot of different games. So you again, don't have to use Minecraft. You can try all these other things. And you can even use this to experiment with creating chatbots or server bots for doing other things in the games aside from Arduino. But I find this very interesting. I find this whole thing very interesting because it's it's one thing to play these games and the enjoyment you get from them is great. And, and I do that. Often I play games like this, but it's a whole other thing to be a programmer and have to do, relatively speaking, boring programming nine to five every day. And then discovering, hey, there's programming I know in these games I like, you can mash them together and do really cool things with them. Things that other people aren't doing. Um, expanding your tool set within the game for server moderation or just doing really cool goofy stuff like <laughs> like a real world alarm from minecraft mansion 
And um, given all the stuff I've shown you and all the circuitry stuff I've worked out and the Minecraft stuff I've worked out, I'm actually almost done writing a couple articles for SidePoint explaining all the stuff I've explained to you in a little more detail, like step-by-step -step instructions for how to execute it again, if you want to, and if the screencast hasn't been enough for you. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to finishing those and publishing them, and I'm looking forward to IoT Month on SidePoint because that's going to be uh, it's going to be awesome. There's a lot of really cool stuff happening on there. I think this is a good place to take a break, so I'm going to do that quickly um, and and get something to drink, have a listen to some music, and hang around for like a minute, and I will see you soon soon. <laughs> 